Come on in, welcome to my home. Today we are going to talk about a book called The Wizard's Butler by Nathan Lowell. I bet you're wondering what I thought about it. Well, let me tell you about what I thought about it as I'm telling you about the book and you're going to probably guess pretty quick because the book is really, really not what you are expecting. Now, let's get into what the book sort of is a premise of. The premise is that you have a man who becomes a butler for someone who may or may not be a wizard. He might just be crazy. That, that's an interesting issue. But I mean, to tell you that that's the issue, when in actuality, you have things like it's urban fantasy. So I'd be lying to you to tell you that he wasn't a wizard. He is a wizard. Let, let's talk about who these characters are. Our main character is Roger Mulligan. He is a former military man who's sort of floundering in life, and this is where I sort of had an issue with the book because I didn't get that feeling. I didn't get the feeling of who he was before he, be, he became a butler. And I have no problem with that. I mean, we get the idea that he's used to being in the military, he's used to having a regiment, he's used to uniforms, so he understands that. Then we have Naomi. Naomi Patching is the niece of our wizard. Of course, she is a money-hungry woman whose husband's name is Thomas, and here's the whole premise for them to hire this man. Their whole idea is that they need to hire him for a year so that they can wait that year to get Joe, Joe Shackleford, who is our wizard, committed. Because, let's face it, he, he's kind of crazy. He tells people he's a wizard, his memory's going, he's just really out there. So, Naomi hires our wonderful Roger. He's, she's going to pay him $5,000 a month with a million dollar a bonus after the year so that way they can get Joe into a nursing home and she can get her hands on the money. That is a problem. That is a big problem. But Roger being Roger, he goes ahead and takes the deal, but he's also very clever and he understands the details of it. So he makes sure that he puts clauses in the contract because yes, he did get a contract. He goes into the detail of what needs to be in there and he knows that his most important commodity is actually Joe. Joe's the most important thing. And this goes back to the whole idea of what is a butler? And you're probably wondering, well, what is a butler? Well, a butler is the person who takes care of a household or an, a house manager. There is a difference between a butler and a house manager, and in this we see that our butler is the only employee of the Shackleford home, and that's important because he ends up doing other things that a butler would not necessarily do, but butlers actually do. And I know I make this sound sort of like boring, but it's not because this is a story about character growth rather than character death. That's been one of my issues with urban fantasy lately is a lot of the urban fantasy that I've been reading has had a lot of people dying in it. And I mean a lot of people dying in it. And I'm sort of, I'm sort of over it. But in this book, it's not about people dying. It's about people understanding who they are, what they want to be, what they're good at, finding themselves. And one of the things that you find about urban fantasy is that usually you're finding yourself as you're going to become this great whatever. You're going to become a great vampire, a great witch, a great hunter, a great whatever. This isn't about that. And that's sort of what was refreshing about this. This isn't about being the absolute pinnacle of fierce whatever. This is about being the absolute pinnacle of what you can be. And Joe finds out that maybe being a butler is something he is really good at. Maybe he likes being a butler. And getting $5,000 a month with a million dollar bonus does help that. What I find interesting about that is that you sort of grow with Roger. It's a nice, quiet book. It's not going to be one of those books where you're going to have explosions or, you know, well, <laughs> I mean, people aren't going to die, put it that way. Uh, you're going to have things where 
the magic that's in the book at first is not thrust into your face. You know it's there. You, I mean, it's urban fantasy, of course it's there. But what I like about this is that it's put in such a way that it's sort of behind the scenes, and that really is a point. Roger at one point realizes that one of his big things that he is supposed to be doing is keeping the house clean, and the house is clean. The house is very clean. There's no dust. The garden is kept well, but nobody ever comes in to take care of the garden, and of course Joe is telling him that it's the Pixies. And at first, Roger's like, yeah, 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 right, Pixies. But it is. There's lots of magic going on in this, and some magic is so subtle that I'm not even sure that, the, that uh, Roger comprehends this until way long after it happens. One of the first things that he does is he gets his uniform, and his uniform is probably pretty much what you'd expect a, a butler's uniform to be. But what's more important is he gets the butler's Bible. In the butler's Bible, it contains everything that you need to run a house. I did not realize that I myself have had a butler's Bible for years, because it has daily tasks, it has numbers to get a hold of people to do things, it has everything that you would need for the running of a house, because that's what a butler does. And a lot of these things suddenly appear when he needs them which I think is sort of the fun of this. Since one of Roger's big things is he is really there to take care of his client, who is actually Joe, the older man who might be losing his memory. He keeps calling Roger occasionally Perkins, who was the former butler who died, and there's no real explanation why. He stays in his study, and he's looking in all these books and trying to figure out things, but we're not sure why. And lots of people come in, and of course Naomi and her husband want to make sure that uh, Roger is taking care of Joe because she wants to make sure she gets the money. It is set up so that Joe will have his foundation take over the house if something happens to him, but Naomi knows that she wants to break that will so that she can get the money, and there is lots and lots of money. Joe did a lot of things, but where did all of this money come from? And is there magic? Is there such thing as magical powers, that sort of thing? And right away this book tells you, oh yeah, yeah there is. One of the first people that he really meets is the lady who gives him his uniform. Mrs. Pettigrew gives him the full rundown of what it takes to run the house, and she's the one who gives him the butler's Bible. Hmm, interesting. The book is everything. Anything which you could ever need is going to be in that book, and as something you need it comes up, it will appear. They never merely mention that in the book. They sort of give it as a throwaway, but it happens quite often. When some, there's a need that arises suddenly in the book, it's there. And I like that. I like the subtlety of it. I like the fun of, you know, realizing that, hey, this book is everything that he possibly needs. And he falls into this routine so quickly and so easily. He realizes that, you know, hey, I'm not the best cook, I'm not the best person to do these things, so he practices. And I think that's also a good message that says you don't have to be the best, but if you work at it, you can get better than what you were, and getting better at what than what you were is really important. I think there's lots of messages in this book which are sort of empowering, which is not a word that I usually use, but they are. It, to me, it's one of these things that says, hey, this makes you sort of feel good, and it did. It made me feel much better about the world and life, simply because it's a slow-moving book, but it's also, to me, it was just like, wow, these are useful things that can happen, and we find out little by little, little bits more about Joe and his life and everything that he did, and he doesn't have any relatives to give his money to except for this niece, Naomi. Mm. The house is a big character in this, because the house is huge, and it has a vast history. I like books that were like, a character is actually an object, and in this case, the house is its own character, because the house has pixies that 
take care of the house. We never actually meet one of the pixies, but they're there, and if you don't do what the pixies like you to do, they'll let you know. They'll play little tricks on you. That's actually sort of fun. And the house has lots and lots of rooms which aren't being used because at one time it was a conference center, it was a school, it was a children's home. So yeah, it had been through a lot and there had been a lot of tragedy with associated with the house. And Shackleford, who owns the house, got lots and lots and lots of money through something. But what did he get lots of money through? An amulet. So there is an amulet which becomes another big part of this. This amulet is this amulet that he found in a cave. It was on a dead person. Well, the person, it was just off of a dead person. Because one of the things about the amulet is the amulet will give you just about everything. But the price of it is it takes your memories. Can you imagine that? Losing your memories and you but you get lots and lots of stuff if you take off the amulet you will die so he's sort of stuck with this amulet he has all these things but his memories are going the amulet loves magical people and that's where this book is so important is because we always look at these urban fantasy things as the main characters, somebody who becomes magical or is already magical and they use their superpowers to become even more magical or defeat the horrible, horrible thing. And in this book, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going to tell you the outcome and the ending, which is, it makes sense, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. And I do like the fact that for once, it's not all about becoming the most magical person. It's not all about having abilities that nobody else possesses or having supernatural things that can then solve any problem. Because I like a book that does this thing where, yes, supernatural powers are really great and wonderful, but they're not the only thing. You have to do the mundane things like the actual work to find it. You have to do research. You have to also come up with technology. And that's one of the things that they do in this is it isn't just about waving a magical wand and suddenly you have all the information. No, they, they actually get technology. In the beginning, Roger is not allowed to have any technology in his presence at the uh, house which is interesting, but as time goes on, they do update to technology, and they use that technology so that Joe can find, you know, some sort of relative so that he can leave, if, you know, he were to die, he can leave his money or his power, his everything to, and that's where it becomes interesting, because lots and lots of books keep telling us that, you know, the only way that you can solve all of your problems is to have all these magical things, and this says no. You can solve your problems without magic. And I think that's sort of the really interesting part about this, is the fact that for once we have a book that says this magical thing is not the most important thing. It's not the end-all be-all. Being the most powerful wizard is not going to save you. But it will help, maybe. The interesting thing about this book is the way that Roger does everything. The fact that Roger is a butler and the butler's big thing is he is the one who runs the house. He takes care of all the tasks, all the duties, and arranges things. And in this he does. He arranges just about everything and all of the stuff which he then keeps co copious notes about, make sure that the Bible is up to date. And I think that's really cool. I think that shows you that there's lots of magic in words, and having this book which can then show you everything that you need to know about your home is its own magic. Well, I never thought about that to just this moment. Yeah, having a book that has all of your information in it would be its own magic. I just like the message that, to me, the message that I got from it, which is the fact that 
being the being a magical person isn't the going to necessarily solve all of your problems. Being a magical person is nice and it can give you lots and lots of benefits, but maybe that's not what you are aspiring to or maybe that's not your purpose because lots and lots of these books all of them their purpose is to become a magical being. I can tell you this which is sort of important with this book. If you think at the end of this book, Roger's going to become a magical being, he does not. That doesn't happen. Does this book have a happy ending? Maybe. I love this book. There is another one coming, which I think is called The Cats, The, the Wizard's Cat. So, you know, it does continue. But all the characters, all the people, everything which happens just sort of confirms Roger's nice, slow growth. And for once you get an actual character that's growing through the work that they do, not the magic that's around them. You get character growth in a book, which is really cool. Character growth that they did, not relying on something else. I mean, this is just this book, which I, it was just one of those books that I just keep re kept ready, reading and reading and reading because it was so nice to have things change, have things grow, have things progress, not through extraordinary means, but through the work that they did. I... I have it. You're wondering if I've recommended this book to like everybody. I'll, I'll stop anybody who's like, "Have you read a good book?" I'm like, "Wizards Butler, Wizards Butler, Nathan Lowell, read it. You'll you'll love it. It's a great book. The ending, the hero, the whole nine yards. It's a book about growth without being a book about the only way to grow is through some means that you do not possess. This is a book about growth." through a means that you can cultivate, that you can grow, that you can become. I so love this book. And you're wondering, how did all the food tie in? Well, he learns how to cook. He learns how to do these things because he wasn't a cook before. But since there is not a cook, in fact, in the house, there is only Joe and Roger. And of course, Roger, uh, Joe has friends who come in. There are people who stop by. Naomi stops by a lot, trying to cause problems. And I mean, part of the problem is her her uncle. I think he's her uncle. Her uncle then has convinced her that he he's crazy, and he's made him her think that he's some sickly. Horror, sickly, crazy guy, and I mean, that's his own fault, and I know why he did it, and you'll find out why he did it if you read the book, but it causes its own problem, and I think, once again, it gives you a chance to look at, you know, all of our actions have ramifications. Some of them good, some of them bad, but this is such a nice, slow character growth. It, I read somewhere that it was heartwarming, I guess, but is it good? It's really good. It is a really good, quiet, nice book. Would I say that this is summer reading? Probably. I mean, I read this quick, and it was just so nice to feel that you can change the world. You can become who you are through your own means, not through some outside force. I like that. I like that a lot. It was a great book. And I would say, yes, go read this book. This book is amazing. It is a great character study. It is a great slow-moving book. It is a great rainy month kind of book. Do you think you'll like that? Okay. You're probably wondering how the book ends. So... Does Joe ever get rid of the amulet which is causing him to lose his memory? Well, hmm, can't tell ya. Maybe I don't remember. Hmm, read the book. Next month's book is The Princess of Potential. This is part of the House Witch series. It's the fourth book in the series where now we have the new characters being introduced and I thought this would be a great book to do because this also once again gives us a chance to have some food. So we will have some of the food which is in the book. I have no idea what this is because the book has not been released yet. It will be released on, I do believe it is June 27th, it is. It will be released June 27th 
And I really like this series simply because, once again, it has a person who uses magic for protection, but the characters, it's a really nice character book. I think you're going to like it, and I would highly recommend that you check it out. I hope you enjoyed this. Take this time to thank these people who give me the opportunity to read tons of books and tell you what I think about them. And I really can say, from the bottom of my heart, if you like a nice, slow-moving book that's about characters and the relationships developing, The Wizard's Butler is the book for you. You are going to love it, and the ending is really nice and makes you sort of feel good. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know down in the comments. I hope we get to see you again the next time you stop by.